Oh man, is that better? I hope that's better for y'all to hear. Okay. It's about 95, 94 out here today, so it's hot as hell. But anyways, like I was saying, um, I encourage y'all to get this book. Every court should have this book here in their arsenal, in their grow house, the room next to their bed to read. Up. Everything's up. So, like I said, everybody should have this. Um, go ahead and order you one. It'll get there in a couple days, about 20 bucks, and you can follow along. So, we're going to go through chapters of this. Uh, we're going to go through situations of this. Um, I can't show you all the pictures. I might be able to fax them and add them into the video later. But the information is where it's at. Pictures only speak a thousand words until you get to the information that's behind it. Um, I just thought about doing this because I've seen a lot of people that was misguided, um, got a lot of bad information um, about growing. So a lot of it's good information. We got a lot of veteran growers at the social. There's a lot of veteran growers on YouTube, all out there, different different uh, clubs. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that do promote on YouTube and don't give good information. So we're going to go straight from the source. One of the best teachers there has ever been um, with growing this. Uh, so we're going to start with this. Um, I was terribly interrupted uh, on my show Sunday. Um, I was about halfway into it and y'all couldn't see or hear me or something like that so I had to switch it and I had to restart all over so I lost the train of thought what I was starting at. Um, so, kind of give you a start over again um, where we can really sit down and get to business and do work. Um, today, I'm going to be smoking on some of my, my great cooks. Some of this black series, you know. Um, so, we're going to be smoking on that talking. Uh, basically, um, episode one, chapter one, all begins with what? The seed. Um, so, when I started talking last week, I started talking about seedlings versus clones. Um, there's nothing wrong with clones. You can get clones. Clones is a wonderful thing at times. If you're trying to train your plant, that one pound plant, you're trying to train it, um, you're trying to get the most out of it, you want to manipulate your plant the best way you can, I would suggest you start with seed because after the first week or two, you can go ahead and start topping and bending and shifting and moving any way you want to, but except with clones, they're already set off in their way. Yes, you can top it. Um, you can get more tops. Um, you're not going to be able to LST it and train it like you normally know, would because you could break it because it's not that very bendable. Um, depending on what size of the clones you get. Because uh, you can get little clones like this and you can train them. You can get clones that are big. Now the reason why I said that is because I like clones to an extent because some of the strands that you get as clones, you get as seeds. Now the reason why I like clones because I'm at the availability of getting clone only strands is available to me, which meaning certain strands, apparel, you do uh, food products, which I'll get into on my next video that I have in there that you won't find nowhere. Um, it's from a clone only strand of reputable clone dealership because I well, and I have gotten into it before about people going in and just saying this is this and this is what it is and you buy it and you don't know and this is whatever it is they say. Um, So, no, there's no fan in front of me, y'all. But anyways, uh, I'll move it closer. There's benefits to it. You know, there's benefits to using regular seeds, which you're going for if you're going for that male or that female um, plant. You know, if you're going for pollen or if you're going just to grow, um, that's a wonderful thing. Um, regular seeds are strong seeds too depending if they haven't been BX'd or F1'd or anything like that but they're still wonderful genetics now when you're dealing with fem seeds you have a tendency to get hermaphrodite, herm hermaphrodite, hermaphrodite whatever it is traits because it does revert itself of the other sex and pollinate itself or you pollinate other plants now let's you use a, a spray that will go ahead and make seeds. Um, 
So, with that being said, yes, it is a tendency to get a lot of hermaphrodites, but if you know what you're doing, um, you get you a stable strand of genetics and follow instructions to what most companies, what they have when you make pollen or seeds, you shouldn't have no problem at all. Um, so, I'm sorry, I keep getting interrupted and it keeps throwing me off, people coming through the door. But anyways, like I was saying, if you do it right and follow instructions, you shouldn't have that much problem, not unless the traits are in that strand. Um, a lot of us have had one of those strands, maybe that was hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. Hermaph just a dude. Just a bitch dude, we're going to call it. Um, we've all had one or two before. But, you know, the best way to do it is to follow, make, take a strong strand and do it yourself. And that way you won't have that problem. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of feedback about clones and seeds. Um, but, like I said, this is just my opinion. You know, you know, my opinion might not be nothing to another person or take it to a grain of sand. I'm just doing it because how I feel, you know, and, and my experiences with them. Now, hold up. Let's go ahead and ding. Let me light this up so I can get ready with y'all. Now, one basic thing we all know about the plant when growing it, it takes only a few things. Water, a growing medium, and light. Now, when you pick any of those, it's your preference. Um, I would like to say it's your preference, your climate, um, how your, where your altitude is at, how is your air, how is your environment. All of that. So, with that being said is... You know, you might like cocoa, you might like hydroponic, you might like super soil. You know, all that is fine. You know, it's no problem with that. It's your personal personal preference with that. Same thing with nutrients. You might like organic-based nutrient. You might like uh, chemical nutrient. Or you might like to go all natural and just add water. You know, or you like to make tea. Um, so it's, it's, it's all up to and how you do it, but basically your plant needs to grow is them major factors. All, a lot of additives, adjectives um, that you add to your plants, um, thinking it creates more um, potency, it gives you more uh, triclones or increases TAC. It's the genetics of the plant. You know, I know I see a lot of stuff. It's, it's willing to try and see if it works. A lot of stuff don't. They get it, you know, to seal because, you know, we'll bite on it and uh, buy it, you know, hoping it to work. But nine times out of ten, it don't. And, you, and if you don't know truly what's in it and you're pumping your plant with it, you're moving away from organic and all natural. You know, you're moving with adding synthetics and boosters to your plant. So, with that being said, <coughs> try to stay as clean as possible with your plant. You think, you got to think, now marijuana is an all-natural plant. It grew in the wild, you know, with just water and it might not have been the most potent strands. You know, it might not have been what we got today, but it's a natural thing. Just add water. I know I'm not, you know, I run with, with it and say that, but... Is the key to it, you know. You can just have, you know, when you water your plant, even if you're using um, different stuff besides super soil, you just have to add water. Now it irks me and it kills me that people give good advice on adding this and adding that to their plant to do this. At the end, at the end result, when you look at their plant, it looks like shit, or it looks like it's halfway dead, or there's no crystal production, or it don't taste good, or it's not flushed all the way. There's always types of stuff like that, so. Be on a lookout, get you some knowledge, invest in some knowledge, learn about your plant. Rainwater is good too, Kev. Uh, uh, I used to collect it as much as possible, but now it's hot, I can't collect it, so you are right. Um, but that being said, know your plant, you know what I'm saying, and learn it. Um, and just learn from how it grows. And remember, 
when I show you this program, I believe it's called Grow Assistant. Uh, I'll go look in there and show you. It'll tell you when you keep documentation of your genetics and you keep them all in there, you grow on. Let's say you have a strand, it might not be yours, you're gonna grow it out, you wanna be exit, you wanna grow it out again with this, you can log everything. Keep a good journal of your grows. That way you learn about your strand. You know, if it likes a, a lower pH and a higher pH when you water it, does it like a stronger dose of nutrients when you give it, or does it like a, 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 a lighter dose, a more watered down dose? Um, does it like to be fed at night? Does it like to be fed in the day better? There's different things that you must learn about each plant. Now, I might have 10 different strands, 12 different strands in here, but each one grows differently. And with that being said, I have to know and learn and write down which plant likes which. I can't just go water them all the same way, same pH. I just can't go water them all with the same nutrients and they all like it. I can't you know, do certain things to them because some react. Some you can kill off, some you can make sick, you can stress the plant out. You can do a lot of stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you growers know um, different temperature changes. Make sure you got your, your tent cool. Now it's getting hot and it be cold when they're hot, cold. That affects your plant. <coughs> so know your genetics of your plant is what I'm saying. Um, and that way you will have the best results. Hands down, and nobody, I mean, nobody can tell you about your plants you're growing except you once you got it down packed. Um, so, that is that. Now, I know we get into cloning, that's another segment. I know we're going to get into production, that's another segment. But with seeds, too, you also, uh, when you pick your seeds, I know usually you get a, if you if you're a medical patient like me and you go into a store, they have some companies in there, some local and some you know TGA and F chronic genetics. You know they have some respectable dealers in there. You know they got the seed packs in there. Make sure even though they're respectable, look at your seeds. Do they look mature? Do they look tiger stripe? Do they look solid, dark? Uh, make sure there's no greenage in them. Make sure they're not green or halfies or anything like that um, Because they didn't take the time to pick them out and make sure you got the best genetics they can offer you So It's all sensitive, you know what I'm saying like you said same strand different phenol, different phenol, different feeding schedule You're right Mac each plant is different. You can add a ten of the same ones each one takes the things differently. <coughs> okay. Now, um, we're going to be talking about a lot in this book, and this is set. This is this is these shows going to be every week, uh, maybe 30, 45 minutes, hour, however long, till I'm done with it. Um, this is separate than that's what's up show. This is class. So this is what I'm trying to help. Like, cause I get a lot of questions. You believe it or not, I get a lot of questions on um, YouTube, uh, uh, Mail, um, about different things, about different strands. Is they going mine, or are they going somebody else's? They got questions. Hey, what should I do? What should this happen? So we're gonna start this, and you know, the best way I can, I can help. I can help. But. Um, Okay. Now they got some here. I'm gonna get that to uh, towards the end of it. Is it how marijuana gets you high? Cannabinoid receptors, lethal cannabis, uh, frequency, secrecy setting, tempo, with ECBC. I'm gonna get into all that about your brain, how it works, and all that afterwards. We're just getting into the plant now. Um, basically, what you need to know about the plant is. There's two different types of plants. There's a male and a female, for those who don't know. Um, you have indica, and you have sativas. And then you have hybrids, um, which usually base 50-50s. They can be 60-40 um, indica, sativa, um, any different ratio until you get tested and find out. Um, that's what a hybrid is, is half and half. 
or not half and half, but it's both indica and sativa. Now, the difference with indica and sativa is indica is more bushy. It's more of a plant with bigger fan leaves, thicker fan leaves. You look at the fan leaves, they have thicker leaves, they'll be more stout. Towards the sativa will be more skinny, um, more lengthy. Uh, it'll be a tall Christmas tree type shaped tree. You'll, you'll know a sativa more than indica. Indica is more beefier, sativa is more thinner. Um, as long stems in the, in the sativa, the short stems with the indica. Uh, the sativa is more pale to medium green, and the indica is more dark green to purple. Uh, sativa is more sweet to spicy. Indica is more pungent, sticky, or fruity. Uh, and the difference that between indicas is six to nine weeks flower, and sativa is usually eight to fifteen weeks. And believe it or not, there's some high ones that are up there like that. Just think, you gotta wait 14, 15 weeks to get some smoke, and you ain't even you ain't even cut it off yet and cured it. So, them is the basically your elements of marijuana: indica, sativa, hybrid. Now, for those who is out there breeders, which I will I'll get into in another. Around another another show. Um, make sure you know what strands you're doing, what genetics they are, how they work, what illnesses they work for, how do they work uh, for the patients before putting them into a store. Before a newbie gets them, grabs them, grows them, and don't know what the purpose or the reason for this plant is. Um, each plant has different reasons for different patients. Uh, different elements, different feelings, uppers, downers, knock you out, hungry, uh, nausea. There's there's a difference. Now, when you got people who just go on there, make genetics, and can't tell me what medical purpose does this plant have? What element will it help? Can you tell me that? Can you tell me what's in this plant? You know, can you tell me anything about the plant? The highs, the downs. What grade is it? You know, um, how was it cured? How was, you know, this? Ask the grower something about his plant. You know, you learn about the plant you get it from. So, I'm trying not to go in the next segment, y'all, so bear with me. Uh, Pay attention to uh, how am I word this? Focus on the plant in its entirety, meaning taking the time out, making sure you know the plant's watered, turning the plant, looking at it, any leaves dry, let me pull it off. Um, this one dried up, any bugs, basic maintenance of the plant and your plant will survive if you consistently do that. Now with indicas that I've known about, the indica plant when I go do my maintenance, they get a lot thicker. You know, it's a lot more bushier. You got to go through. I know I'm not supposed to say you're supposed to defoliate because a lot of people say, no, that's going to stop the yield or um, that's going to hurt the plant. And, you know, everybody got their own opinion. So with that being said, I like to defoliate because I like to let my nodes get the best sunlight they can available. I don't strip it bare, but I give it enough where it doesn't block the node like that. You know, but everybody's two inches on. Um, you got a lot of sativas that got a lot of space on it. Sometimes they might be real long and lengthy and covering up. You know, like I said, basic maintenance with your plant. We'll get into that with that and you'll, you know, you will know about your plant as it grows. If it's your first plant, pay attention to it. Uh, you, might, you might want to grow it out again. Oh, and I forgot to add it as a category too, besides indica, sativas, and hybrids, there's also rudial seeds. Rudialis seeds, I'm sorry. Um, which is the auto plant. 
which is a shortened plant, 0 to 60, 0 to 50 day plant yielding um, fast growing plants, um, which is good. I've grown some out. I know a lot of people's grown some out. Um, they get pretty good and numbers are all right so so. But I would say the photo plant is still a stronger plant genetic wise. I haven't had an auto flower that was stronger than a photo yet. Uh, but I'm always up for the challenge. Um, so. Let me get this in here. Okay. That's what I would like for y'all to get, really get this book, even if it ain't about dealing with me. Get it and read it. There's a lot, a lot of good information in here, man. It talks about strands. It talks about what the time is of it, when you should plant it, when you should flower it. Man, it's, it really, this book here is really phenomenal. And for those that came late, it's the Ed Roth and on Marijuana book. Okay. Now, growing, what I have learned... I'm going to close this up because I'm going to say a few things and that'll be um, episode one. Just the intro uh, show today that we get into it next one. Um, what I've learned is seedlings in, 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 and beginning of, the, of their life is real delicate. Um, and it always begins with good soil. Meaning, now I'm talking about too rich, burn the seed up when the root hit, nothing like that. I'm talking about good soil, meaning it's not compacted that we're the seedling, the tail can move through, um, plant itself and grow, um, let its side grow, come out, because it it's too compacted, is your soil able to breathe once the seeds, you know, once the root is in there, is it able to move around, is it able to do anything, um, that meaning that that's why a lot of people use uh, plug roots, root, rapid rooters, cocoa and stuff like that, because it's light, perlite, because it's light, they can run through it. I'll also show you one of my secrets using super soil and a, a light base with starting seeds that works real good. <coughs> okay, now back what I was talking about. Now what I learned is if you got a lot of space, a lot of tent, a lot of a lot of grow equipment to set up. Use the lessest light blue spectrum spectrum you can for your babies, meaning like T5s, T8s. Um, if you're a little small, um, if you have like a small, uh, I want to say closet, a little box or whatever, like that, cheap, you know, you can use uh, CFLs. They're good for starters like that. You know, I've never flowered with them. A lot of people have and got some good results, and I, I wish them the best. Congratulations. Um, but me, I tried to start with beans um, from from soil 400, 600. I'm all back here. Some did good. Some burnt up. Some shriveled up. Some that came out because it was too hot, too too intense. The intensity was too bad for them. Um, some made it and some didn't. I lost a lot and I gained some. But the ones that I gained were stronger and uh, good genetics. But what I would say is starting them out, coming out of the soil, use a low lightage lesson like CFLs, T5s. Um, I'm not, I'm not an LED guy. I haven't grown with them yet. Um, things are in the works. But if you have a low, small wattage one, you can probably use them too with that. Um, so... Then, like I said, once that week, two weeks, and once they start growing their true sets of leaves, and then you see the little bottom, the little two round leaves start to die off, or they start to turn brown, or however you see them, they not, they, you know, will tie up, shoot them up under that 400, put them up in there, you know, and they will take off on you, you'll get a, a real good, strong plant, you know, because the way you want to grow it is progressive light change, meaning, Progressive light changes meaning starting with a lower light, each one you transfer it to or up it, it's a higher wattage, higher lumens, higher everything. So starting with CFL, you can go CFLs, T5s, T5s, 400, 400, whatever it is you want to grow with. See, like me, I started 
Um, some was under the 400, but then a lot I took out, starting under uh, the T5s, and I bumped them up to now, which is the 400 in here. Then I moved from the 400 to the 1000 watt in there. Then the last three weeks, I hit them on the 1200 watt, which is a setting on the ballast that gives me 1200 watts. So they get boosted the last few weeks of their life. But you, it's the progressive light change, and your plant likes that and adapts to it, and it gets stronger and it grows faster and more vigorous and more powerful and stronger that way. If you have a plant that's grown with the same light through its whole life cycle, there's good things and there's bad things to that. You might not get the yield you want. You might have a beautiful plant and have some good bud. You might not get the yield you want. Um, you might not get the growth you want. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of key factors in using the same light through your whole life cycle. That's why they say have a different light change every stage. Um, so with that, what else is what else am I leaving out with the beginning part? Um, daily maintenance, like I said, check your check your pH when you do it. Everything will be stressed. When you always, I recommend the first three to four weeks of uh, your plant using a good light uh, make sure if you use a new it's not too heavy if you use your normal but dilute it a little bit um, there's only there's only a few things you should be doing to your plant either watering it giving it a tea or nutrient um, feeding or, or organic which is all water and then you get in the fuller spray which can be a light mixture of certain things you know whatever you like to use um, but I would go light always I mean, you never really want to go full strength because you can't burn your plant up if you don't know what you're doing. Um, stick with something light. Stick with something that's good as a fuller spray. Do your research, and that can work too. There's nothing wrong with using two different ingredients as long as it works for you. And make sure you always want to use a test leaf or a test patch on your plant to make sure it's not burning your plant or your plant don't like it. You know, you make sure you want to get that. Basically, that's, that's that's really what you want to do um, with that. Um, I'm trying. Let's say, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on because I'm gonna go on to the second part. Um, basically, this is what we're doing. We're gonna sit down one on one, me and the camera. We're gonna drop some knowledge. Uh, we're gonna answer some questions that every week. After you see this video, if you have a question about the topic, put it on there. We're gonna answer it. Uh, there ain't no question answered today because there ain't no questions, and I'm gonna answer every question. Um, this is not a show where we're going to do a bunch of giveaways. That's on my other show. Um, this here is basically informational only. Um, and we're going to progress. I'm going to add my video, my update video to this um, session here so you can see how my plants look now. Um, next week when I do an update, you'll see how they look then. And then we'll get into that talking about it. Um, so it's going to be real fun tracking and, and watching progression. Um, of how this is going to go. And me, I'm only just using water. Everything in here is 420 soil. There's nothing else in my tent. Um, so it's going to be fun. And I encourage y'all to come. I encourage you to tell your friends sub. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of problems over here and nothing. So we're going to have a good time. Um, I'd like to thank all my Social Grow uh, family for coming on and watching. All my YouTubians, as my boy Billy Yuba would say. All my TBC family, <clears throat> you know, one love, it's all good. Um, shout out to everybody who's on. Let's see who joined us today. We got Gimp, we got Kevin from MacBook, Cookies Mike, um, Boostons in the house, Gimp, Costa Farms, Genetics is in the house, uh, Green Clouds is in the house. Kevin, uh, Cyclops was in the house. Grassman is in the house. There's a lot of y'all in the house today. Medvet was in the house. Oh, man. We got a full house today, y'all. You know, like I said, I thank everybody for coming out um, and help supporting this cause. We got some new things coming out we're going to be working on and talking about. Uh, Mr. Burks is in the house. What's up, Mr. Burks? Long time stranger. I didn't see you. I apologize. My bad. Um, you know, so we're going to have some fun. And everybody who's in the Washington area, because I got a few of those 
that's around here that I talk to. Um, I ain't gonna say the names because a lot of you know they don't want to get down yet unless they want to. Um, I, I talk to y'all. Everybody who comes to the Hemp Fest this year sees me. You'll see me with my custom shirt on, my uh, new Decernetic shirt that's gonna be made. I'll show you. Y'all can receive a shirt, um, but the Decernetics line um, that's going to be going in the print shop this week. Um, we're actually a poster too, and we'll have the actual seed packs up by then. Um, if the timing is right, if everything come in like it's supposed to, that's already pre-packaged up with some of the genetics um, that will be ready to go. Um, if you see there, we'll plug you, you know, so come join us at Hempfest. Um, hopefully, like I said, my buddy that's from the social is going to be here uh, live with us, so he'll be on the show. We'll have a special show. I'm not going to tell who it is. You know, we'll keep it a surprise. Um, so, y'all know, y'all. <clears throat> Alright y'all, well I'll see you next week, uh, probably around this time, uh, maybe a little earlier, so uh, just look out for episode 2, this is Growing 101 with these turns, I'm out.